Mindset Game Podcast, and I'm your host, James Roberts. Before we get started with this week's show, first off, let me take this opportunity to welcome back the regular listeners, and if this is your first time listening to the show, I hope you enjoy this episode and decide to subscribe to the show. And today's guest, I've got Blake Bowman. He's a corrective exercise specialist who basically helps people fix their broken bodies for a living. Having had multiple joint issues himself, Blake underwent a journey to corrective his posture and muscular imbalances, which were causing him pain. Now he teaches others how he, how he did the same. So thanks again, Blake, for coming on. Yeah, James. Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. So I'll, I'll fair, we discussed a little bit, obviously, how, how you got into fitness. Can you explain to the viewers and listeners what how your journey uh, come about from the early days of fitness to where you are now. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, we were talking about this earlier, but I have pretty much been involved with physical activity, sports and whatnot ever since I was very, very young. Um, you know, when I was very little, I played football, soccer, as we call it in the U S um, you know, all sorts of different sports that little kids play. Once I got into middle school, I got really involved in martial arts. Once I got into high school, I was pretty much doing primarily wrestling. And I was weightlifting to help with my wrestling. And basically, once I graduated from high school, I just continued with weight training, strength training. And, uh, you know, I really kind of messed my body up doing that. Um, I was lifting like a meathead. I was not lifting intelligently. My, the programs that I was doing were not very balanced. And long story short, I ended up developing a lot of what's known as muscular imbalances, postural distortions, and these things led to a variety of different injuries in my body. And I basically had to stop lifting for you know a long time. And I got really depressed and I started searching for answers as to what I could do to fix these things. And uh, basically, I studied physical therapy textbooks. I became a certified corrective exercise specialist on top of my personal training certification. I worked with an osteopathic physician uh, for a while, working in his office with his patients, doing like rehab-based exercises. I got all this knowledge about you know what I could do with exercise to fix my body, and then I basically did that. I fixed myself and got myself out of pain and. You know, once I did that, I was like, other people need this service, you know, other people need to know that this is possible. Other people need to know that they can do this to themselves as well. And uh, that's basically what I do now, James. I teach people how to kind of fix themselves, their injuries, their posture, their muscle muscle imbalances using uh, like corrective exercises, which are just exercises that are specifically designed to address like dysfunction in the body. But yeah, long story short, that's basically how I first became involved in fitness and how it kind of evolved to where I am now. Okay, that's quite interesting. And what kind of is the difference between a general, as we term it, personal trainer to what you do now? How much expertise have you gained in between? Yeah, so most personal trainers, and you know, I guess I'll be speaking on behalf of most of the personal training population, but most personal trainers focus on, you know, typical goals that people have in that industry, which are like weight loss, uh, muscle gain, you know, they want to be trained for something that's sports specific. Um, Most trainers do that. And there's a lot of good trainers that do that and they do corrective exercise. Um, whereas I am more focused on corrective exercise with a secondary focus on that stuff. So I can still help my clients with weight loss. I can still help them, you know, put on muscle mass, but it's really not where my focus is. My focus is really taking people that are broken, if you will, people that have these imbalances that don't feel right in their body, taking them, fixing them, and then secondarily helping them, you know, either lose weight or put on muscle mass. Like I said, I I help people with that stuff too. But my primary focus and what kind of differentiate, differentiates me from other trainers is that my main focus is addressing like dysfunction in the body um, and uh, only secondarily do I focus on those other things like uh, weight loss and you know strength gains. 
it's probably a good. It's probably something more trainers should look at doing that in the future because obviously the population is becoming more and more sedentary as it is, and it's the problem is only probably only going to get worse in the future. Is that something you absolutely? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like scary. I was I'm reading a new book by uh, Kelly Starrett now. Do you know him? No. He's big in CrossFit. He's a physical therapist, but he uh, he wrote this new book called Desk Bound. It's actually not new. It came out a couple months ago, but it's really good, man. He talks about uh, he states all these statistics about uh, you know sedentary lifestyle. Not only what it can do to your like muscular imbalances, but also, what it does to your like cognitive function, your brain function, heart health, you know, how it's correlated with obesity, obviously. And like children nowadays are just not moving as much as they, as they were even when we were kids. You know, like uh, physical education classes have changed a lot. And, you know, some schools have even cut out like recess. So there's this like no in in the states at least this is true and I don't think it, I don't know if it's true for all schools. However, I do know that some schools are, have done that. Um, but yeah, I think that there's definitely a, a scary trend that we're moving down right now. That uh, and you know the issues that we're seeing now in the general population and the fitness population with obesity, you know, cardiovascular disease, you know. Mm, orthopedic problems associated with sitting and living a sedentary lifestyle, I definitely think that those things are going to, you know, unfortunately increase in, uh, you know, in frequency. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that as, uh, you know, we be, we continue to become more sedentary as a human race, you know. So it's unfortunate, but uh, I definitely think we're moving in that direction. It's probably a good point you bring up, obviously, with, the kids obviously uh less active than they were well my well say how old am I about thirty now so that would put say twenty years ago obviously it probably doesn't help by obviously see the the television being more accessible you can watch probably well in in the u k it's probably fifty channels probably in the u s it's probably thousands. <laughs> That you could yeah. you could possibly watch if you wanted to, but it's not physically possible. Whereas, probably in my lifetime, when I was that age, probably about four, or five, and obviously mm. the technology wasn't as good that you could you you probably if you wanted to record it, you can't watch TV. So whereas now you can watch one one show, record another. Or record record two shows and be watching something you recorded ages ago. So you kind of probably got more stuff than you would ever need, and so you kind of never get off your ass to actually do things. Definitely, yeah. And even transcending TV is like all the you know handheld devices. Um, those are orthopedically speaking even worse than. TV is because most of the time when people are watching TV, the TV is like level with their head. You know, they're looking at it in front of them, but with like iPads, laptops, cell phones, you're adding another layer of complexity and dysfunction to the sedentary lifestyle because now we're looking down all the time, right? Yeah. So our heads fall forward. You know, we develop forward head posture, all these messed up breathing patterns as a result of that, our back rounds. And then you get stuck in that position. And as you age like that, that position, it it causes a lot of damage to your spine, to your neck, to your nerves. Um, and then by the time these kids are reaching, you know, a lot of my clients that I work with, you might think that like the people I work with are like older people. A lot of them are like in their 20s, young, early 20s. And it's because they were born with this kind of stuff. And, you know, having bad posture, you can tend to get away with it for a while. But, you know, the longer you have it, the more likely it is to manifest as orthopedic injuries and problems. And just the fact of the matter is, like, we didn't have, you know, iPads and cell phones when we were young, James, but now kids do. So they're starting to destroy their posture at an earlier age, which means that they're going to have orthopedic dysfunction and injuries also at an earlier age, which is scary. Well, I don't know, what, what, I don't know if you're the case. Do you, do you remember when you first had a mobile phone? Because yes. for me, it's probably about 
11, 12, and that's obviously just for an emergency, whereas you think, well, you hear, you see kids nowadays, probably about, I don't know, five, six years old with an iPhone, it's like, well, you don't need all that, <laughs> you don't need everything yeah. that's on an iPhone at that age. Yeah, or we condition our kids to get used to it, too, like, I have a friend that has a baby, and uh, whenever the baby's acting up or making noise... The first thing they do is just stick an iPad in this baby's face. And then this baby will just get, like, mesmerized by this iPad. And, uh, you know, it's like they're conditioning their kid from, like, day one as a baby to get used to this technology. And it's not it starts there now, you know? Like, you were 11 when you had a phone. I was, like, 14 or something like that. Maybe even older than that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just starting a lot earlier. And this is just going to lead to more issues uh you know when these children you know reach their like even something as early as their 20s you know it's like (laughs) i i when i used to work with clients in person um which i don't do anymore i just work with uh clients via the internet via coaching but when i used to work with clients in person you know a couple years ago i had a couple 13 year old and 12 year old clients that i would train and uh it's just amazing to work with that kind of younger population to see what, um, you know, they're like, because not only did, you know, I'm I'm thinking of one client in particular, not only was he morbidly obese for his age, he was like 185 pounds and like under five feet tall. Um, but he also had what's called a dowager's hump on his back, which when you're like in a rounded position and your upper back is rounded like this for a long time, your body will actually start to lay down collagen and fat on your upper back in order to stabilize that area. It's kind of like a cast. It like reinforces that area. And over time, that actually makes like a physical protrusion, right? And this is like common in like older people, like seniors. You'll see it in them. But this kid was like 12 or uh, 12 years old or 13. I can't remember. But he had this already. And wow. it's it just like it really made me sad you know, because he's only 12 years old, man. He's got, not only is he morbidly obese, but he also has, you know, a dowager's hump, which is just a manifestation of horrible posture. And He's just going to have all sorts of orthopedic issues in conjunction with, you know, other health issues because of his weight when he's older. So it's, uh, it's really alarming to work with the younger population nowadays, like, you know, under, like, kids, just because you can see firsthand, you know, what that sedentary lifestyle and all the technology is doing to them from, you know, the start. Yeah. What What would normally be the cause of the hump in, in an elderly population? Obviously, the, the there's going to be um, uh, weakness in the mu- muscles. Obviously, as you get older, more and more that's the cells start dying. Is it? Is there other co- There are other causes that that manifest to make that more apparent? Yeah, I mean, I think the main cause is basically what I, what I was describing, the laying down of, of new fascia. So if you have kyphosis, which is excessive rounding of the spine, you have that your whole life, your body's going to gradually lay down new tissue in there, and then over time you're going to develop this hump. That's probably the biggest cause of that. I mean, but there are other factors. There are other things that can cause that too, for sure, like benign tumors and things like that. But posturally speaking, that's the biggest cause of that, for sure. Yeah, well, it's quite it's quite sad to think when you're thinking it's well, like you say, it's a twelve year old thinking it's not yeah. it's not a great outlook on life, isn't it? Having the, all the well, not just that problem, but having health issues problems is like it's kind of a how would I put it? kind of hard way of starting out in life obviously you got obviously the hurdles of the weight issue to start with and then you compound that with having the the, the hump as well it's kind of like well, yeah for sure it yeah it's a, bad it'll bring about well from a site well so like psychological and mindset one it's gotta obviously bring because he's at school there's the element of loads of things, bullying, and all sorts of th- more problems down yeah. the line. So it's like, well, 
Yeah, it's not good uh, foreshadowing for his future. No. That's for sure. But yeah, I mean, what you brought up is actually another interesting point. And that's when, you're, when you have bad posture, it literally makes you depressed and more stressed out. <laughs> it was, uh, it's very interesting because Harvard Business School did a uh, study on, on what they called power posing before high stakes social evaluations, which means like job interviews, applying for a university or something like that. Um, basically, they analyze people's hormones and the effect that their posture had on their hormones. And by putting somebody in a good postural position, it raised their like testosterone by like 25% and lowered their cortisol by 20%. Don't quote me on those figures. That's ballpark range. <laughs> but it basically, and this happened, this hormonal change happened in two minutes. So in two minutes, by having better posture, their testosterone, their male sex hormone that makes them confident and like dominant, that went up and their cortisol stress hormone went down. So they simultaneously... Just by changing their posture, made themselves feel, you know, more confident and assertive and less stressed. And the exact inverse was found with bad posture. So if you have bad posture, it literally jacks up your cortisol and lowers testosterone. So it will actually make you more stressed and depressed and less confident in yourself just by taking a position of bad posture. So, you know, with that client of mine that I was talking about, yeah. You know, I mean, he has so many things that are not working in his favor right now, unfortunately, you know, with not only his weight, his health, the way other people perceive him, his, you know, orthopedic risk of injury because of his horrible posture, but he probably goes into school every day too and feels, you know, stressed out, doesn't feel confident in himself either. And that's all just compounded, you know, with all those other things that we talked about. So... Yeah, man. You know, we need to do something as health professionals about, uh, you know, what's happening. Yeah, you don't think, well, you, you think a technology is as helpful and then we've kind of touched upon it that just just there, obviously, what impact it can have on somebody's life on a negative thing. So you're thinking, well, it's supposed to be there to help you. And in this case, it's, an, it's probably turning out to be a massive negative. Yeah. Yeah. I think that technology can, I mean, I think it's kind of like a neutral thing. Like there are ways to use it, you know, appropriately. And then there are ways to abuse it. Right. Like looking at your cell phone every once in a while, holding it at a, at a level height that's level with your eyes every once in a while, it's probably not that bad for you. But if you're constantly, you know, stuck in this position where your head is down, you're staring down at a screen for eight hours a day, that's when it becomes damaging, you know? <laughs> Just like anything else, got to have moderation whenever you're using it. Yeah, but you won't see people walking down the street without out in front of them, though, would you? Because <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not safe. Well, it's not safe for them, and it's not safe for you. Because that's at least you want somebody out here with the fit, like fist out. You don't want to get well, hit. Well, that's, in the, the, face that's when... the ironic thing. It seems like it would not be safe to obscure your vision by holding this thing out in front of you, but it's not any more safe to look straight yeah. down at it either. Although it feels like it is, you know. But it's really not. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll see that. Wow, well, it's probably it's probably well. You've been if you had it outright and obviously outright in front of you, it's better for your posture, like you say. But also, you've got that clear line of sight, so you could possibly see something in the in the distance. Whereas if you're looking, like you say, looking down, yes. you're not going to see the person to you, but you're right on top of them. That's right. Absolutely, man. Uh, trying to think, I kind of lost my train of thought with that because I'm going to ask you a question when when you say, um, in terms of the oh, yes, we'll come back to it. Um, you were saying with in terms of the the business study Harvard Harvard University did. Well, you've always been taught as you're growing up, obviously, how you you portray yourself with your posture is. If reflection of you so it's kind of I don't know if people are going away from that and obviously and because obviously obviously if you, 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 if you how would I put it if you're sitting up with a good posture you're perceived in a better light than having a bad posture because obviously about well, say quote unquote 
Uh, say if you had a bad posture, you kind of don't look after yourself. For for example, um, I'm probably countless other examples, but I can't think of any. Would you? That's something you, you would agree, attest to, and agree to as well. Yeah, I think that that's been uh, proven scientifically too. Like uh, that, like over half of your communication is nonverbal when you're communicating with people. So, and body language composes like the majority of that nonverbal communication too. So it's like really not only are you changing your own hormonal state with your posture, but people are also perceiving you differently because of your posture. Like somebody with good posture is oftentimes perceived to be more capable, better leaders, more attractive. People assign all of these attributes that may or may not be true to people that have better posture just because they have better posture. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, I uh, talk about that in some of my videos I've made, like, you know, you have to have good posture, especially in today's marketplace, you know, in business, because you want to go into that meeting not only feeling confident and not non-stressed, but you want other people to perceive you that way too. You know, you're, it's like a double-edged sword. If you go in with bad posture, not only are you going to feel more stressed and less confident, but other people are actually going to perceive you that way too. They're going to be like, this person is not a good person to hire for this job because they don't have good posture, you know? So, yeah, it's super important, man. I think it's a... Uh, you know, it's just something that's not, you know, valued enough in today's world. That's why I like to talk about it in my videos I make. It's it's probably we don't t we don't touch upon it that much, but obviously from a mindset kind of way of looking at it, everybody is judgmental one way or another. It's everything's based on first impressions, or be it, well, like like we've been discussing with posture. Obviously, you you once you have a bad first impression you you more than likely are not going to be able to turn that person around some cases you might be able to but and that's probably very rarely but generally yeah i don't know if it's probably the same with you yourself obviously if you've got a first impression of somebody you don't generally change it you either you like that person or you don't and they but well, they probably have to do something miraculous to turn you turn turn you around to changing your opinion of them. Absolutely, man. It's just another reason why posture is so important. You know, you want to have that good first impression, make a impact, make a splash when you first meet somebody. Uh, we've not touched upon it a little bit. Obviously, what for the listeners and the viewers that are watching it? What is the name of your YouTube channel? The name of my YouTube channel is Gorilla Zen Fitness, and that's spelled G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A-Z-E-N. And, and uh, go on, keep going. I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> um, and it's something. Well, since I've been watching your videos, I've been quite interested to ask you: Why did you come up with that name? Yeah, yeah. People ask me that all the time, um, and really, the reason why I named it my business Gorilla Zen Fitness is because I believe that life is all about balance, and I also believe that everything in the universe is polar, right? There's a there's a opposite to everything in existence, and I think that your training should really embody that. Um, so I think that you should work out hard, but also have, you know, what's considered soft training incorporated into your hard training. You know, it's like the yin and the yang. And, uh, I've always been fascinated with primates. So that's why I named it gorilla, but I spelled it gorilla fighter because it, it seemed like the way that I spelled gorilla is, you know, contradictory or, or doesn't go with Zen, which is like really peaceful. So since there, there's like a dichotomy there, it kind of like embodies like my philosophy and everything. And like I said, I've always liked primates. They fascinate me. So that's just kind of how the idea for Gorilla Zen was born. <laughs> uh, well, it's quite, it's quite interesting uh, how you come about naming your business. And well, it kind of, it's, 
it's incorporating your your interests and in obviously of fitness like in nature so it's kind of c combining the two into a, obviously a business name yes absolutely man that's what I was going for <laughs> And then, well, the, the kind of the videos I like to watch are obviously the one on the video you did on, uh, oh, I can't think, of the, oh, we talked off there about the uh, underactive hit. glutes. Mm, yes. And then there's a few other, of, like, breathing techniques for training and things like that that I find quite interesting. How do you come about getting your topics? Do you get any input from your clients or subscribers for like different topics? Uh, it's funny. Somebody just asked me that the other day. Um, yeah, I do that. So I'll, I'm always like reading my YouTube comments and seeing what people want me to make videos on. So I'll make videos based on what I see in the comments section. But also... When I am reading, because I'm always reading new books um, on, like I have a book right here. This is a new one I just picked up. I'm always expanding my knowledge in the corrective exercise department. So I'm always reading books on physical therapy, back pain, things like that. And while I'm reading these books, if I come across something that's insightful and valuable to me that I didn't know before, I simply just make a video about that because I figure that other people – also might not know about it. They might also find that piece of information valuable. Um, and because I didn't know about it, maybe they didn't know about it too. So I make a video about it that way. So those are like the two primary methods that I use to, you know, create videos on uh, YouTube. Okay. And then obviously, well, I to refer back to the one on underactive glutes, it's something I kind of use as a rapport because I get asked uh, questions uh, related to amputees about obviously how do they improve that one side the the impaired uh underactive glute obviously i use yours as kind of a template and obviously well how do i go about adapting that so it would become a little bit more specific to them and obviously taking your points and just ch tweaking them a little bit so it was it was. It's quite useful to, from that sense of it. You're probably, in terms of my, for me, it's probably the go-to per go-to person, and I would say probably to my followers, the stuff you come up with obviously is of good quality. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's my it's my pleasure. No, but it's it's like like you say. Obviously, there's probably thousands of thousands of people on YouTube. Obviously it's bet it's better to obviously look at the person's credentials and obviously you talk you probably simplify the the scientific jargon and things like that so people can kind of get layman's terms of it. And obviously so you obviously from a professional standpoint you, I know what you're you 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 can I know what you're talking about from the 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 more complex things. Okay, you know to say well they're big big words, but you know you know what you're talking about, and you simplify it so Joe Public can kind of get what you're talking about. If you get what I mean. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I uh, strive to do. I try to. Try to, you know, because the things that I read in these uh, physical therapy books are very complex ideas. Yeah. So I try to kind of internalize that and then express it in a way that's very easy to, uh, for everybody to understand. So it's something that I really strive to do in pretty much all my, every video that I ever make. Well, it's probably, you could probably go beyond that obviously the books obviously well journals especially scientific journals are very complicated to uh, to read obviously once you get you start reading more and more of them you can kind of get the gist of it yes absolutely so, so that well i'd say probably yourself and you and me uh making it more simple obviously it's probably like the go between really isn't it between the the science buffs and 
just a normal day person, obviously, yeah, you have access to be able to read that, but if you can find a way <laughs> of finding it in an easier and a more understandable way, you're going to go and do that. That's right, man. So I can't think of anything more to ask you, so I think we'll wrap it up there. So thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And if anybody wanted to connect with you uh, via social media, what's the best way for them to do that? Best way is probably on YouTube. So Gorilla Zen Fitness. Um, just search that on YouTube. Gorilla Zen, again, is spelled G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A-Z-E-N. Even if you kind of butcher that, it'll show up right so that's probably the best way to uh, reach me i upload several videos a week on there usually so yeah so once again thanks blake for coming on and before i forget i would really appreciate it if you would be so kind as to leave a short review as it helps to get the podcast more notoriety and it will be more visible in future to others and thus helping more people which my guests and i are all about Once again, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time for another episode of the Mindset Game Podcast.